If you're new to databases, especially cloud-based databases for no-code tools, you absolutely must understand how to implement a junction table. Or in the case of SmartSuite, which we're discussing in this video, you need to know how to build a junction application. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down step by step for you exactly why you need a Junction app and how it helps you get more granular information as you collect data. We're going to build one, one step at a time together here in this video. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth. I'm the owner here at Gap Consulting, and it's our mission to help you unlock the power of no-code tools. I'm talking about getting better organized and getting automated within your business. I make it my mission to help you save up to 20 hours of your time every week using no-code tools. If that's of interest, the first place you want to start is our free automation training. Grab that training at garethpronovos.com slash webinar dash registration. That is where you can get all signed up and view that training instantly. And we're going to walk through together the core fundamentals of building in no code automation. But without further ado, let's hop on into the heart of this video. I'm talking about one of our favorite tools, Smart Suite today. And we need to understand the key fundamental components of a junction application. Now a junction application sounds all fancy and might be a little intimidating, but this is how you're going to build a linked relationship between things between your applications in ways that unlock new powers for you. I promise you when I'm building something in no code for my own team or for a client, when I get stuck, it's usually because I haven't thought about using a junction application. So I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step how you build one of these. And really it all comes down to how we create a new table or a new application in the case of SmartSuite, and we're going to connect it to two other pre-existing applications. So let's hop on into it. Now, first, I want to show you a way not to do it. And the reason for this is because I need to contrast the way to do it versus the way not to do it so that you can actively see the difference between the tool. Now go ahead and open up your own Smart Suite software if you already have an account and follow along with me here. Of course, if you don't, you can get signed up on a free trial using our affiliate link that you'll find wherever you found this video. Here I am in a brand new started from scratch solution. And inside of solution, I have already app one. Now to get a junction application going, I need at a minimum two other applications. Now the beauty of smart suite, these applications don't have to be in the same solution. They can live in totally different places and I can still get connected to them. But for simplicity, for our example here today, we are going to be using all of these applications within one solution. Now, one of the easiest examples to understand and highlight this is when we talk about invoices and services. So these are gonna be my two first applications. So I'm gonna rename application one here to invoices. What kind of information do I collect on an invoice? Well, by default, because I have a new application here, I've got my assigned to, my priority, my status, and my due date fields. I don't want them for this particular use case. So I'm gonna go up and open my fields to display, and I'm gonna clear all of this. I want just my standard title here, which I'll fill out in time. Now, what I want when I send out an invoice, number one is gonna be the invoice number. We're going to go ahead and make the title the invoice number. We also need to have an invoice date. So what is the date that we sent this invoice? So this will be date sent. Notice that I've just selected a field type here of date, created the date sent field, and we're going to add this field. Next, I'll have the date due field. So once this loads, I'll click on add new field, go date again, select date, and this will be date due. So when we send out an invoice, we're sending it out on a date, and of course it's due on a specific date. Now we also have some other information whenever we have an invoice. We'll have things like who is it that's getting this invoice. So I might link to contacts here. In the sake of simplicity though, I'll just add that contact name directly here. I'll bring in a name field type and this will just be the name of the person receiving the invoice, first and last name, and probably an email address as well. Now. It doesn't matter if you're doing invoices or not. This is just an example to help illustrate for you how a junction application will work. But here is where in my invoices application, 
I'm storing all of the information that relates to the invoice itself. Now, one other thing I mentioned is coming into title here and saying that this is the invoice ID. Let's go ahead and update the field. So an example invoice might look like this in our system. 1001, it might have been sent on the 1st of June. We might have 30 day terms where we then say it's due on the 1st of July. And this might have been sent to me. So this would be sent to Gareth. Click done here. And then of course, drop in an email address. Now that I have the basic outline of this, what are the services or products that we might link up to this invoice? Let's create our second application. So I'll imagine that we are a service-based business. So I'll list this second application as services. Maybe we have three different services. Again, I start off with my default fields here, but I want to remove them. They're not necessary for this particular application. Clear those. And now I'm going to build my different services. The first one might be maybe service one, two, and three. Each one of these services is going to carry a different price point. So I'll bring in a currency field type. This is going to be the price of the service. So here we go. I add this field, give it a moment just to load. I'm going to go into my title here and make an update here as well. And I'm going to call this the service ID and we'll set that up. So again, going back to what we were saying, maybe we have three different services, service one and the price of service one to keep it simple is a thousand dollars. Next, I have service two. Again, we're going to keep it simple, make this one 2000. And I think you see where this is headed service three for 3000. Now we might want to include these services on our invoices when we send them out. Now the original inclination might be to build a direct linked relationship between these two apps. This is the wrong way to do it. Don't follow me along here, but I need to illustrate this again, just so that we understand the power of the junction table. So if I build a direct link, I would add a field. I would add a link here. It's going to be the linked record field type. And I would select the application I want to connect to. In this case, invoices connect to services. This is a direct link. This is not the right way to do it. But here we go. I will say link to services here. And I will add this field. Now I can select some services. If I only sell one thing, maybe I sold one service one, no problem. This works great. I can link to the record. But what happens if I sold one service one and two service twos? How do I denote how many service ones I sold? I can't go in and put the quantity sold on the service and I can't put the quantity sold on the invoice itself. I don't get the granularity that I require in this linked relationship. So while we built this linked relationship from invoices here over to our services application, and you'll notice, by the way, if I go into my fields here that we can see the link to invoices, remember that the reciprocal of that link is also true. Invoice linked to service service, therefore is linked to invoice. So as we connected invoice 1001, it's connected here as well, but we don't get the level of granularity we need because we did not implement a junction application. So let's delete the error in our ways, the mistake that we put together here. I will delete this field. I'll right click and remove this linked relationship and note that when I remove a linked relationship, I am breaking it in both places. So I have to come back over here and delete this field as well. So now I no longer have a link between invoices and services. What I need is a junction application, which is just a fancy way of saying we're going to build a new table, a new application inside of our solution. That's going to properly link up all these things and give us the granular level of detail that we require. So here's our next one. And I'll just call this line item detail. Here it is. Again, I don't need my default fields, So let's just clear them away from our view. And I want to now create two linked relationships from the perspective of my junction application. So here I come in and I create a link to my invoices, link to invoices, and I toggle off multiple records in every instance of a junction application. I'm going to be linking to one invoice and one service only. 
so I will be toggling off multiple records. Once I'm happy with these settings, I click on add field. Here we go. And I didn't give this a name properly. I made a mistake there. So I should have renamed this invoices. Oh, good. It properly saved. Next, I'm going to head on over and build my second link. Again, a link here to my linked record, this time to my services application. So let's find it from the list. Only one service at a time, just as with our invoices. And let's add this field, give it a moment to save. I now have my link to invoices and to services. So now when I'm linking to something, I can say in this example, let's just give this a quick one, two, three title because I haven't fixed the title just yet. But I can now get granular and say, on invoice 1001, I sold service one. Well, how many? Here I can bring in a number or quantity. I'll bring in the number field and I'll just rename this as quantity and precision to the whole integer, yes. And I'll go ahead and add the field. If I sold one service one, I can now demonstrate that here is added to this invoice and I can add another one. Again, I'll come back here and fix that title in just a moment. But now I can say, well, also on invoice 1001, I sold service two and I sold two of that quantity. Now, I promised we would come back and fix this title here. What I prefer to do here is create an auto-generated name. So I will get this warning that says, hey, you're gonna uh, alter all the names of the records. Yes, I understand, let's do that. What I wanna include is the name of both of the things I've already linked to, my invoices and my services. So I want to come in, in my example, and find my invoice link, include that, and maybe a little bar here, a little character, and then I'll add my services, link to services, and update the field. Now what we're gonna see is that I see the name of this as invoice slash service sold. I can add more information here as well, like the quantity or the price per service, etc. But now I have a structure where I can look up at my invoice level. What's the total number of things that we sold? Well, of course, in this example, it would go back to line item detail. It would see that we sold one service one, two service twos. Or we can get deeper on here and say, what's the price of each service? And then we can multiply the price times the quantity within the line item detail. Then we can take the summation of all of the line item details that relate to that specific invoice and total the invoice here on the invoice application. That's a pretty standard use case. And all of this is made possible by the junction application. Let's take that one step at a time. First, I'm going to bring in the price of the service or cost of service. I'm going to look this up because this data lives in my services application. So here I go, cost of service is the name now. And I want to look up from my services. I want to bring in the price of that service and let's add the field. So we see now this service one, if you recall, we kept it simple, cost a thousand bucks, service two, $2,000. Now we can write a simple formula. We'll call this subtotal, but it will be a formula. And let's bring it in here. Subtotal is the name. And I will use the advanced editor here where I do a little bit of multiplication. Now, of course, in our example for SmartSuite, we cannot utilize a lookup field for our formulas. So what I need to do is actually access the service itself. And then using dot notation, I can bring in the price. So this is the price value of the service that's linked to in this particular record. And I want to multiply this value by the quantity sold inside of this application. Let's go ahead and add the field. And I think you'll see what I mean. Here we go. We have 1000 is the cost of service multiplied one. And here's the cost of service of 2000 multiplied by two subtotal 4000. So now we have this. The last missing piece is taking all of these subtotals where they pertain to an invoice and summing them. So by dropping into invoices here, I can bring in the total, which is going to again be a formula field. Rename this to be total, advanced editor. And again, I want to use that special dot notation that is unique to SmartSuite. And I'm looking at my link to the line item detail. And I want to grab that subtotal that we used 
This is allowing me to access the subtotal field within my link. But what I wanna do is sum all of those related subtotals. So let's go ahead and drop it in. Sum, open, close parenthesis, looking good, add the field. And there we see 5,000. 4,000 plus 1,000 from my line item detail showing up here properly as the total. So again, invoices is simply an example here. This is not the only use case for junction applications. A junction application is simply a third application that links together two other applications inside of SmartSuite and gives you granular access at a record line item level. I hope you got a ton of value from this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe and like it. And of course, in the meantime, keep on building.